It's the most ambitious sound film I know, without question, I've ever been a part of. I assumed this movie was gonna come out in 2012. So when I heard that they moved it up, I went, oh wow, okay, here it comes. It's coming sooner than we expected. As we were finishing Transformers 2, Michael had said, you know, this one's gonna be much more intimate, fewer explosions. I kind of went on that illusion for a little bit. <laughs> He had mentioned that he was gonna tone down the action. Didn't tone down the action. This is every bit as big as any of the other Transformers films, maybe combined. Michael's great in the way that he works with us because he gives us a tremendous amount of freedom. So it's really up to us to sort of react to it and to create what feels right to us. And then we'll take it to him and get him to react. And the great thing about him is that he's very clear about what works for him and what doesn't work. I know him pretty well. I know what he likes. He likes a powerful, bold, dynamic mix, but we really try to stay clean. And clarity is obviously the key here. The approach with these movies is to first just collect as many cool sounds as possible. We make it a personal challenge to, to go out and record as much fresh sound as we can. It's inspiring to us to, to get out into the field and get new material, fresh ingredients. One of the things we talked about wanting to do with this movie at the most basic level was really um, push it to the next level in terms of how we take organic sounds and twist them into the electronic, and conversely, how, how we take electronic sounds and sort of twist them into the more organic world. One of the things we started playing with was an electric guitar to move in that sort of direction where you're just sort of straddling the borders between, okay, is that is that an organic sound or, or an electronic sound? John Marquis performed, you know, maybe an hour or two in two separate sessions of guitar licks. <laughs> One place where those sounds really st stuck were for these alien attack ships, which have big gun turrets that lock into place. And the motor sounds of those turrets locking into place are 100% John Marquis on the electric guitar. And it's basically a na na na. When that sound comes up, the residents of Chicago should feel terror because <laughs> they're about to get blown away. For a movie like Transformers, there's a lot of just physical recording things that we need to do. Like there's a military component, so we've got military weapons, machine guns, vehicles. All right, this is gonna be a 12 gauge shotgun. Uh, getting our level set. Take one. As long as that's not in your way, you're good. I'm good with that. There's a segment of this movie that has a shuttle launch. So we recorded a lot of rocket sounds and two different rocket launches on the West Coast out of Vandenberg Air Force Base, which were the largest rocket launches in West Coast history, a Delta IV rocket and an Atlas V rocket with these 100,000 pound payloads. The access that we get with the military through working on a Michael Bay movie is pretty extraordinary. And we had uh, armed escorts helping us set up. The closest rig to the launch was 200 feet away from the launch pad. We uh, set a little timer on the rig and went off to the quarter mile position set another rig there, and then we went to the evacuation point, which is a mile and a half, two miles away from ground zero. Record all of these angles, and there's a sequence in the movie where there's no layering of sounds, just that pure air-ripping rocket sound. Okay. 
one of the great playgrounds for us in sound is on the Foley stage. So doing what we called wild Foley in the beginning of the process yields some really, really fun sounds. One thing that we played with was dry ice, taking different types of metal and letting those resonate on the dry ice. There's one section of the film where there's a massive alien mothership crashing and part of the metal groans and strain of the hull we made out of that dry ice. There's one whole sequence where we work with the tempo of the music and Optimus's guns are playing the eighth notes and the sixteenth notes and are part of the orchestra. So the music's not just a separate sort of abstract thing playing along with action, but the music and the action are working together. Here we go! Here we go! Keep it tight! Coming around! All right, focus, focus, focus! This is the first Michael Bay film that we've mixed in 7.1, which is uh, basically a kind of a quad surround experience. You have a left wall, left back, right back, right wall, so there's four discrete channels. And there's a lot of movement in this movie. And being that it's also 3D, there's a lot of pulling things into the room. Having the left and right walls, which doesn't come from behind you, allowed me to pull sounds into the front half of the room. I could have a discreet uh, rat-tat-tat-tat, kaboom-kaboom in the left back versus the, the left wall, and you really felt separation. It's a great format for 3D, because 3D does also pull into the room. You still do that with 5.1. You have to have 5.1 because theaters out there right now, I don't know the exact numbers, you're looking at 500 that are equipped to play 7.1 and then thousands and thousands that are 5.1. I had a ball with it and I showed a couple of sequences to Michael early on and he just commented, God, the surrounds just feel really cool. Uh, what's going on? And, and I said, well, that's the 7.1. We told you we really wanted to mix this movie in 7.1. You are just enveloped in sound. I love going to the movies. I know how it is out there. And when we're doing like little delicate balances on things and something we're saying, should we make it a little lower? Is it gonna be okay? I, I sit there and say, midnight screening, 700 people, totally into it, full room. Give it that little extra bit because you need that extra little juice. In here, you know, we've got, you know, eight guys and we're just, We've been working all night and nobody's talking, nobody's cheering at the screen. You've got energy in a movie theater. You've got people that are just like pumped. And when they see things on the screen, they're just like, you feel sound from them. So you want to keep it just rocking. I think we have answered what visually I think is probably one of the most outstanding visual effects film I've ever seen. It turned out as good as I'd ever hoped it would be. And my expectations were very high. Michael's expectations are very high. I can't think of a film ever with him that he's been this excited about the sound of his film. He continually talks about there is just so much here for people to enjoy. This is a cinematic experience unlike anything we've ever done. And I know it, he knows it, everyone on this movie knows it, and I just can't wait for people to actually get a chance to see it.